So we've gone over this before. I have blog articles about it, things like that. And um, I encourage you to go to our website and look up those things. But first of all, what is a business email compromise? So it's a type of information seeking scam. So it's a it's it's um more sophisticated than just a phishing attempt because there's a higher level of trust there. So they will attack an end user and they'll trick them into sharing sensitive information or transferring funds to a cyber criminal. Often this uses them getting access to an account of somebody that you have dealt with in the past. So you have a higher trust of clicking on that attachment or just gaining access to your account. And the goal here is to steal money. Another thing, EAC is an email account compromise. It's uh, like a BEC, but your account is actually the one taken over. And it can be absolutely devastating if that end user is a administrator. So let's look at some signs that your email may have been compromised. Um, so if you're looking around, you might notice that emails have been sent without your knowledge. Normally, a hacker will move those to another folder or delete them. But if you're looking for your deleted items folder or your recovered deleted items folder and you see some emails that you're, you don't remember, um, that might be a sign that uh, you have had an email compromise and have been sending out fraudulent uh, emails. Missing emails, you know that there's emails that you should have, but you no longer have access to, or you're waiting on a reply for something um, that you're not getting. Um, that could be a sign that you've had some uh, compromise as well. Inbox rules are a huge IOC. So that's um, if you go in Outlook and you go up to on the top, you go to rules and manage rules and alerts. You want to check those periodically to make sure all the ones that are in there are the ones that you have set up. Because what will happen is the threat actor will send an email out of your account and then they will make a rule that moves any reply back to that email from a specific domain or that sender or whatever over to a RSS feed, move it to an archive folder and mark it as read, things like that so that you don't see that reply back and aren't alerted to the activity that's happened. I like to think of it as there's things that they do live, which is send out the email and then delete the email that they sent. And then there's things that they set up so that the processing in Outlook handles later, and that's moving those um, moving those rules to archive and things like that, those folders, those uh, emails to archive so that they can look at them later and use them against you. Um, other unusual activity to look for is attachments that didn't work as expected. Um, so that doesn't mean it didn't work. That just means it didn't do what you expected to do. It might have done exactly what the hacker wanted, and that could be stealing your session token to get access into your um, 365, it could be installing software in your computer to further um, perpetuate a regular ransomware attack. Password prompt, um, if you click on something and it asks you for some passwords and you're not expecting to have to put in a password, then stop. Um, report that to your IT. And then a big one that we've seen is somebody will call you and ask you, hey, did you send me this email? And you'll say, no, that wasn't me. Well, it might have been you. It just it might have been your account, just not you. And so you want to check that and you will want to have them send you a screenshot of that email, uh, get a copy of it, all those sorts of things. So then you can go and look and have your IT look and say, hey, did I actually send this out of my account just to make sure that you did not have a business email compromise? Go ahead and tell them no that you didn't send it so that they don't click on it. But um, that's not the end of that. You want to make sure that you go and, and do the things necessary to find out if you did. Um, new devices that access your account, you get alerts that, hey, there's new devices accessing your, your account. That could be a, a sign of a compromise. And another one is, we just saw this yesterday with a potential new client, is strange OneDrive activity. So they reported back that they had a business email compromise and how they found out about it was they had a password file in, in SharePoint under Excel, and they noticed um, an end user who no longer works for the company um, their little box was moving around in Excel as if they were looking at the document. And they're like, well, that's weird. That person's not here anymore. It turns out somebody had gotten into that user account and they used that to um, to go and, and do some hacking from there. Um, looking at passwords, password files, things like that. So what to do if you're compromised? So the biggest thing, most importantly, immediately is notify your IT team. They should have playbooks and things like that. This should be something that they've dealt with and they should be able to solve it. Now, if your IT team can't solve it, then I would reach out to somebody who has this sort of experience like us. Um, we have seen IT companies in the past um, where we've come and, and taken and looked at um, their company and done audits and just realized that they were over their heads as far as dealing with this for the first time. And this is something you want practiced hands to, to deal with. But Immediately, once you find out that there's potentially been a compromise, you want to sign out of all sessions, change the password, and reset up multi-factor authentication. 
the goal of this is you want to get that threat actor out of that mailbox um, so that they can't do any more damage than what they've already done. And then you want to start looking for the damage. So you want to look at the audit logs for unusual activities. So things like, uh, did they get logged in from outside of the country? Impossible logins. Inbox rules got created. Deleted items, recovered deleted items. All those sorts of things. You want to look at all those to try to find out what was done. And then there needs to be a sent message report. So once you found out when the compromise you think started, then you run a message report that says, hey, these are all the messages that that mailbox sent out in that time frame. So then you can look and see, hey, which ones are fraudulent, which ones are, are legitimate and whatnot. Another huge thing is knowing what's in your email. So we've seen people's passwords get saved in their email, whether it's in a contact card or, or some other things, bank account information, other sensitive information, client information, all those sorts of things. The criminals would use that to access bank accounts. And the goal, like I said before, is to steal money. But um, you want to you wanna find out what kind of data was, was compromised and know what's in there. And then I'm going to recommend this for any compromise at all, whether it's email compromise or anything. Contact your legal and your cyber insurance. Um, even if the cyber insurance doesn't do anything, sometimes uh, you need to let them at least inform them that, hey, there was a security incident that happened. And uh, these are the steps that were done to remediate that. And then let them make the decision of uh, what the further steps would need to be so that you're in compliance with your insurance. As always, um, this will get posted on our YouTube page. Like us, subscribe there. Um, come to our website, look for our blog, like us on all these uh, spots. Um, uh, Facebook, in, uh, LinkedIn, all those sorts of pieces. And you know, reach out to us. We're here to educate you and we're here to help the community. And a huge goal, like I said, personally to me is to secure as many Cincinnati businesses as possible. I need your help to do so, though. I need you to to reach out to us and make sure you're getting the information you need and, and uh, we can make that happen. Once again, I thank you for joining me and uh, we went a little long today, but I appreciate you being here. Thanks and we will see you soon.